Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Voice of the Paper. I'm William Moore, acting as something of a moderator today, and I'm here with Maggie, one of the lead editors from The Flat Hat, who's going to give us a bit of an in-depth view of what The Flat Hat's working on at the moment. So, Maggie, what is the current headlines of The Flat Hat? Yeah, um, so I'm Maggie Moore, and I'm the digital media editor. I'm here in place of one of the news editors because they were both very busy tonight, uh, especially after a late night of editing yesterday. Um, so on our front page this week, we have two really big stories. Um, the first was this weekend's uh, protest for more gun legislation. Uh, there was a walk through Colonial Williamsburg this weekend, um, and it was written by our uh, senior staff writer, William Allen. Um, and the biggest thing about this story was that there were a lot of quotes from people that were interviewed saying that they felt like they were part of the massacre generation. It was a lot of students, um, and it was really a commentary on how many mass shootings there have been in recent years and how it seems like there's an increase and it seems like there's not a lot of action in place to try and limit those or stop them. Um, so there was a lot of frustration at the march uh, and a lot of calls for action. And that story really ties into the second one on the front page, which is about uh, the life of Nathan Evans, uh, the football player who was shot in Norfolk over the weekend uh, and who sadly passed away. So while these events were obviously unrelated they were unfortunately well timed if that makes sense um it really made the topic of the uh gun violence march over the weekend hit home uh in a way that it hasn't quite at the college um a lot of other virginia schools have had shootings in the past um but this was the first time that it's been this kind of relevant and painful for the student body uh so we felt that those were both both very important uh issues to put on the front page uh, and for the student body to see and learn more about. Certainly sounds it, especially since the school administration sent out a related email to the topic. Yeah. So it's currently quite literally on the campus's mind in a lot of ways, and it's good that the Flat Hat is also publishing about it. Yeah, um, and our hearts go out to anyone who knew Nathan Evans uh, and is struggling right now. Uh, you have a lot of support here. Uh, and then another thing that the news editors told me about was uh, you should keep an eye out on the Flat Hat website in the next week for a police database that uh, Leslie Davis and Heather Bear, two of our news editors, have worked really hard on. Uh, they're both data science majors, and they're putting that work to good use, gathering a bunch of information about crime in Williamsburg and the way the police have dealt with that. Um, and students will be able to look into that themselves uh, after the database is launched. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be very useful for the student body, especially if you know they're worried about like maybe where it's safe to go in Williamsburg and things of that nature. And we'll be sure to, once it's up and available, put that as a link in the description of this podcast so you'll be able to see it there. Yeah, All right. uh, and I know Heather is going to talk about it more next week. Oh, cool. So yeah. something to look forward to for next week, I guess. Yeah. It's a weird <laughs> thing to look forward to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, thank you so much, Maggie. It was very useful information. Yeah, great to be here. Next up, we have Avery, who works with the sports desk in the flat hat. There we go. Third time's the charm. <laughs> um, my name's Avery. Um, I'm the co-sports editor for the paper. And the um, really the base story in sports this week that's online um, is the news of several transfers of basketball starters following the firing of head coach Tony Shaver, which was very abrupt after we lost to Delaware in the first round of the CAA playoffs. Um it seems like this news took players by surprise as their reactions have been to leave Williamsburg um, or attempt to leave the college by entering the transfer pool. So first we found out about Justin Pierce. He announced that he was graduating a year early and joining the transfer pool in order to play his final year of eligibility as a grad transfer. Um, shortly after that, Chase Audige, the freshman standout star of the basketball team, and Matt Milan, redshirt junior, who we got from Boston College two years ago, also announced that they would be transferring. Then LJ Owens, another starter, um, actually he's not a starter, but he plays quite a few minutes um, as a as sort of middle, middle of the game sort of bench person. Um, he announced that he would be entering the transfer pool as well. And following that, I'm sorry, Gavin, do you know who else it was? LJ and there's, oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Luke Lowy, I'm sorry. Luke Lowy was the oh, final yeah. person um, who 
it is rumored, has entered the transfer pool. So four of our five starters are gone now, as is our head coach. We have no news about a potential new coach to replace that person. And uh, we have no players left. So have the players fun. made this clear that it was um, in relation to the fact that the head coach was fired or are they... Is it just like a kind of tacit rebellion, if you will? They have not explicitly stated that it was a direct result of Shaver's firing, um, but they gave no indications that they would transfer before this. Uh, and personally, having talked to them and, you know, interviewed them after games quite a few times, they seem to really respect Coach Shaver. I know that he was very well liked. Um, his firing was very abrupt, and many people are questioning the athletic director's decision to do that. Uh, especially because she had to consider that this was a possibility. Um, So the timing does seem a little suspect, as does the sheer number of players that have expressed an intent to transfer now that Shaver's not going to be here. Wow. Yeah, so that sounds like it was very abrupt and very sudden. Absolutely, yeah. So we really only have one starter left. So we'll see if Nathan Knight decides to stay, but if not, we might be out of luck for next year. (laughs) Yeah, that's a a real discrepancy in the player starting line. So that could be a real problem. Uh, does, was the rapidity of like this news story coming up like an issue? Because it sounds like it was very abrupt. It was very abrupt. Actually, Chase Audige and Matt Milan announced on the same night, like two hours apart. Um, so we'd already written an article about Shaver's firing and Pierce's transferring, and then I had to write another one very quickly about Chase and Matt. Um, and then the news about LJ and Luke also in quick success- succession. Um, so it seems like people are kind of scrambling for the last lifeboat off the Titanic at this point, uh, which makes <laughs> the turnaround time for our articles very important because this is breaking news. Um, and sports doesn't get a lot of that in general, so we're really working hard to keep up with it. Alrighty, so thank you for listening to this episode of The Voice of the Paper. Uh, special thanks to Avery and Maggie, who contributed to this particular episode. Stay tuned next week for more news from the Flat Hat, and we hope to hear from you soon.